Hi, I'm Chuck Mayer with Fishy Business. We're back again, it's Wednesday, chaos abounds. We're gonna start right here in this uh, little magic area with these 180 gallon glass tanks. I hate to sell things on this, uh, on this video, but we're a fish store, so, and that's kind of why we're here. So as much as I want to help you with all of your problems, questions, answers, and I'm going to do that as episodes continue, I do want to point out things as they come in in the week that are special. And last week you saw the 210 gallon tank. This week, this is the 180. We have three of them. They are undrilled, but they are 539 bucks. That's it for a 180 gallon tank. Okay, enough about money. Come with me. Let's go see how chaos continued this week at Fishy Business. Come on into the house. So, this is where chaos reigns on a Wednesday. First thing you have to check out are these amazing koi we picked up last week on Friday. We have got, and you have to look at the colors of some of these. We have lots of different grade koi, but it has been, I, I mean, I don't remember a time we had a koi that looked like that. I don't remember the last time a koi sucked my finger either. But uh, check out this. I mean, these are big show size koi. The season is upon us. March is almost ending and with that will come April. April will bring the pond season into full gear. So if you're in the market for koi, you're looking at what you could have in your backyard, at your home. Uh, these are some amazing, probably, in my opinion, the most personable fish that I know of, especially the most personal fish that we sell. Koi can live a very, very, very long time. We're talking human length years here. So you can get a little baby koi and it can be with you your, your whole life. So come on, let's go see more chaos. I uh, do want to draw your attention, we're not going to harp on BioCubes this week, but if you subscribe to Fishy Business SC on YouTube, you can win a free BioCube this week, in which case you will come in and I will teach you all about how to set it up and all the advantages. So yeah, subscribe to the channel, Fishy Business SC, you'll automatically be entered to win the BioCube we're going to draw at the end on, <clears throat> excuse me, on the 31st of the month. So enough about the BioCube. Coming right this way. Something we got in last week that I want to bring your attention to are the cobalt microviews. These are great little nano aquariums. You, you will always hear me talk about nano aquariums because they're just so convenient and nice to put a little aquatic world on your desktop, on the coffee table, by the nightstand. And speaking of that little world, I want you to come see the new shrimp tanks. Come this way. Kara fought a decent battle and she won. Right over here, we changed out the old shrimp tanks that held all the shrimps that you never could see, especially when I pointed them out on video, that I couldn't see. So now they've been transformed, and this is what they've been transformed into. Two great little Aquion shrimp tanks. If you look in here, at any point, you can see the shrimp with no problems. Folks, this is what it would look like if it was in your house or on a desk. Sand bottom, beautiful, beautiful display of all these different colored freshwater shrimp. Live plants just makes a perfect little environment. And even in an environment this small, you can get very creative and create some really, really, really cool things. Now, before we get into the fish, I wanna show you something else. Come with me. You remember we had two shark eggs and from week to week, we've been watching them to see what would happen. Well, something happened and it happened about four hours ago. We had a baby shark. And she, as it is a female, was born on March the 20th at about noon she came out and this is her and I don't want to bother her too much but I do want to coax her to where uh, coax her out a little bit where you can see her so this is our little baby cat shark she's very new to the world and she's already eaten mice shrimp so she's out and about. She's probably not wanting to be in the light very much right now because she is a baby. But you can see the other one is about ready to come out too. But this is where she was about five hours ago. And this is where she is right now. So you can see about the length of my forefinger. So that's the newest addition to Fishy Business, born four or five hours ago. Okay, now. 
real quick before you guys got here, I drummed up, we just got new life rock back in stock for saltwater aquariums. And what I did, I wanted to show you guys how versatile it is by putting it together on an on a unlevel surface. If you look, you can see that this display, which only took a few minutes, was done with boxes at several different levels just to show you how versatile it is. A lot of the questions that I get with people setting up saltwater tanks when they're using live rock is that they're not very creative or we don't want to hire you to come out to, to do it at our house. We'd like to be able to do it ourselves, but we're not that creative. Well, Life Rock takes a lot of that away because the pieces and the type of rock that you see are so unique that as I begin to dismantle this, you can see how many different pieces formed what we put together. And again, if you look at the boxes, the surface is completely uneven. But this is Life Rock. We have it back in stock for a little while. We've already sold four or five boxes today. It's fantastic stuff for reef building or laying out the skeleton of your saltwater tank. So having said that, we're gonna go back this way and we'll start at the freshwater and work our way back to saltwater. One of the most popular freshwater tanks for people that want things that are incredibly unique are tanks that are what I would call mid-aggressive tanks or semi-aggressive. They, they, the fish that are in there, <clears throat> excuse me, are all compatible within a certain type of aggression. And what I wanna show you, these new fish that just came in today, the African red-eye tetras, they're a tetra that we haven't had before. They're a larger body tetra, kind of like the Congo tetra I've shown you for the last few weeks. Also, as you look in here, you're gonna see the Polypterus. This is a very good, really cool dinosaur type fish. The Royal Pleco, which is fantastic that came in. A very showy, we talked about collectible Plecos. Fantastic algae eater, long lived. We have a Black Ghost back in stock. You might have seen one in the video we shot of the Stingray tank last week, but great little fish, always a statement maker. Likes to hide a little bit during the day, but very, very hardy. You can see this tiny little polypterus. I would have never even noticed. Um, oh, it looks like we might even have, what's behind here? Wow, we have a red tail cat. You wanna talk about a gorgeous fish. Now, this isn't for the average Aquarius, simply because it is a catfish that gets huge. I mean, very, very, very huge. But this is a very little one, and it is an absolutely gorgeous, incredibly hardy statement maker. We got the Dimbawe cats. This is an African schooling catfish. As you can see, they stay together. If you want a schooling low to midwater catfish, these just came in this week. Absolutely fantastic. We also have the watermelon Placostomus. See if I can get him to come a little bit closer for you guys. Yeah, there's your watermelon Placostomus. Another very collectible Loricardae. Something we get asked about every single week. Rope fish. And either we typically have a lot of them or we have none of them because it's one of the fish that sells out the fastest. This fish is very akin to the Polypterus family of fish. Where it lives in the wild is very still water, so its lungs have developed so that it'll gulp air from the top to provide oxygen to itself. It does not need a high level of oxygen, which is why they, a lot of times they'll work really good in planted aquariums and where they're not gonna get messed with anything. They're very compatible to fish that are of a fair enough size that they won't fit in their mouth. Um, the one thing about the rope fish that we try to emphasize to everyone is it's very easy for them to get out of the tank. One, because they like to come to the surface to gulp air, to fill their lungs. The other, because any snake-like or eel-like fish is quick to try to go to the surface to find a hole to get out. Why they do that, I don't know, but most of the time you kill them by them getting out and on the floor. It's very rare that you lose one in a tank. They're very hardy, 
uh, they're very personable too. They'll actually come to the glass and look at you just like you're looking at them. But definitely wanted to draw your attention to the rope fish. Speaking of the polypterus, I've got this guy swimming right across. Um, he's got a snake skin, almost looks like a boa constrictor. A lot of cool fish this week, a lot of cool fish this week. Let's go see, oh, one of the most popular Corydoras catfish we got in, the Sturbii Corys. It's a beautiful, they almost have a yellow pectoral fin with spots all over the body. Absolutely fantastic little fish. Have tons of guppies for the old world fish collector this week. I also have little pom-pom crabs. These are a fully aquatic crab. We always draw attention to the shrimp, and of course, because I'm drawing attention to him, he's gonna run away. But this is a freshwater crab. Stays totally submersed. See if I can get... Here we go. Little shy to be on the camera, but another fantastic candidate for the nano tank. Called a pom-pom crab because his little uh, claws in the front look like pom-poms. Now I was told, oh, we got glass cats. Check these out. These came in. Let's see. See-through glass catfish. And somewhere in here, it is said that we just got another gold nugget Placostomus, but they're apparently hiding well enough for me to not see them right now, so we shall press on. Let's go to salt water. One question that I get more than any other, and it, sometimes it comes as a question, sometimes it comes as a statement. I've always wanted to do salt water, but everybody tells me how hard it is. It's the number one question I get every time I work in here because it's impossible to come to look at the freshwater fish and not see those glowing fish that are behind me in the salt water section. The one thing that I will tell you is 30 years ago, 50 years ago, it was hard to do salt water. And that's where a lot of horror stories come from. We probably had a ratio 30 years ago of about 70% freshwater to 30% saltwater customers. That is not so anymore. Technology has made it so that we can keep saltwater fairly easy. The main difference is, is obviously the money that you're going to spend on the front. And the biggest mistake people make with saltwater now is because it is so much easier than it used to be. After about six months of keeping, people are like, you know, this isn't as hard as I thought, and they start taking care of it like a freshwater tank, where they walk away from it for a month here or a month there. Saltwater is very unforgiving. If you walk away from it, if you don't pay it attention, that's where it bites you. Otherwise, the ability to maintain or for us to help you maintain and successfully keep a saltwater aquarium has never been greater than it is right now. Yes, it's more expensive, Yes, there's a little bit more involved, but if you have 30 minutes every week, you can keep a saltwater aquarium. There are three types of saltwater aquariums that I usually tell people. One is just the fish only, which is what a lot of people are used to and what you see a lot of time in restaurants. It's just an aquarium with fake coral and big, pretty, colorful saltwater fish. That's one type that you can keep. There is another type. The extreme of that is the reef aquarium, where you have living corals, live rock, everything in the whole aquarium is alive. But there is a middle ground, and for some of those that want the look of a reef aquarium but are not ready to spend the money on the corals and the light, because that's where it is with, with reef keeping a lot of the times, is that you can still do an invertebrate tank. You can still do a tank with live rock or very similar to the reef rock that I showed you a few minutes ago, and you can still have it look like a reef tank and have it full of invertebrates. The only thing that requires the hefty lighting price are the corals. Outside of the, the value of that, it knocks a, a third off the price right there. So that is a very quick, unexpanded overview of saltwater. If you want to come in or you want to send messages, I can talk a lot more about it or in a lot more detail. But I wanted to just to give you that little bit of an overview because that's a question that I get a lot. So let's go look at saltwater. 
I don't know this year that the tanks have been as full of fish as we have them right now. Gracie has done a tremendous job of handling and bringing in so many different types of saltwater fish. So, as you look into the tanks, I'm just going to point out randomly some of the things. Sailfin tanks, copper band butterflies. Um, we got this little guy, a file fish. This file fish specifically is an Aptasia eating or leather jacket file fish. It actually eats Aptasia, which are like a weed in a reef tank. It's a little anemone that grows, a glass anemone that grows, that gets a little too prolific. That's the fish you want. He eats them. I have them in a lot of service aquariums. And that's right, we do service. So if you want a saltwater aquarium or freshwater aquarium, we will be happy to come maintain it for you, as long as it's within a reasonable distance of the store, that is. Antheus, Koran Angel came in. <clears throat> Lemon peel, well, that's actually a yellow angel, I'm sorry. The lavender tang, very, very hearty tang. The Tamini tang, one of my favorite tangs. Tinakitas tang, eats off the live rock itself. The Navarcus angel, I mean, we have three of these right now. We usually, it's usually hard to have even one. Probably my favorite angel in terms of its hardiness and its compatibility, the Coral Beauty, uh, Centropygi bispinosus. Great fish. Over here, we have the Huma Huma Trigger. You got the aggressive tank, a Durgeon Trigger, which is an absolutely gorgeous fish. We got in a Desjardini Sailfin Tang from the Red Sea, which is actually gorgeous. Sailfin Tang is one of the hardiest fish that you can buy. This particular one is the most colorful of that variant. You can notice the orange on the stripes, beautiful color there. The Sargassum Trigger with the blue eyes, very, very cool fish. Another Emperor Angel, Frostbite Clownfish came in, along with the Cortez Angel. The Black Ice Clownfish came in this week. Rounding the corner, the reef aquarium that I showed you last week, the guy was working on, he's working on a little bit more. Now I expect this thing is probably gonna double the next time we talk. Um, but this right now, this is, he's just started to add corals and it's just starting to come alive. So as the weeks continue, you'll see this tank continue to move and change in a lot of different, a lot of different ways. I have to sidebar here because we have the Africans mixed with the salt water back here, but this, this I have to show you. So we'll scratch salt water for a second. Check out these sulfur head peacocks that came in. They are absolutely fantastic. So if you have an African cichlid tank, the peacocks, whoa, fantastic. Moving right along, the blennies, gobies, rasses that came in this week, so cool. We got the little tail spot blenny. Again, a candidate for any Dr. Seuss book you'll ever see. We have three mandarin dragonettes this week. We haven't been able to keep these in stock and we've only been getting about one a week. This week we were able to get three, so hopefully some of you that have been coming in, we've at least got three of them. So get down here and check them out. A royal flasher wrasss came in. The pink line wrasss came in. Very soft pastel. Uh, this is a Celebrius wrasse. Both of these are different species of them. Again, like I talked last week, this is a great family of wrasses because they are so compatible with so many things. Let's see, engineer gobies. We have urchins again, something that I took for granted we would have every week. <laughs> we haven't had in the last three or four weeks. So plenty of urchins this week in different sizes, different shapes. We have emerald crabs back in stock too. If I can get this little guy out, This is the emerald crab. This is a great little crab to have in a reef tank or in an invertebrate tank for the main reason that they eat that horrible valonia or bubble algae that grows in your tank. If you have a little army of them, they will absolutely work the tank over. I don't know what's back here. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite fish. Look how pretty that fish is. It's a blue spot watchman. The gaudy high fin. I it's just a fantastic statement maker of a fish. It spends most of its time primarily on the bottom. Very cool little guy. Oh, we got in another fairy wrasse. Lots of starfish again this week. Goldfish abound. 
lots more small koi. We've almost sold all the black koi that we had last week, but all the pond fish are in. So if you've got a pond, if you've been contemplating a pond, we've got them. Oh, check out behind you the uh, arrow crab trying to make a, an appearance. We've got a really cool arrow crab too. Lots of inverts this week. I haven't seen them all because they've all just been put up and a lot of them are hiding right now. But uh... Oh, and we have more on Friday. There's a whole nother shipment coming in on Friday. Gracie's bringing in. We also have live rock on the way. Okay, so that brings us to an end of another week at Fishy Business. I hope you've enjoyed the quick store tour. We kind of went through it fast and we bounced around like normal. One of these days I'll get the hang of trying to present this in a right way. Please bear with me until then. We're gonna keep trying to bring that to you each week. Please subscribe to Fishy Business SC. As let us know any questions you have. Send us the questions. Any way we can make this better. I promise as videos to come, we will do more tutorials about things. We will go into more in-depth about the individual fish and things like that. There's just so much that's happening this time of year and that changes every week. I just want to be able to show you a quick overview of it. And then if you need us, you can call us 731-4004 or you can send us your emails, you can send us your comments, give us an idea of how to better help you. But we will go into more detail, I promise, as time goes on. Please like our videos if you would. Cassie is heading down, our little videographer is heading down to Florida tomorrow to hopefully give you a very special behind the scenes of what it is like to actually go to a pet trade show. My <clears throat> partner, Guy Griffin, will be doing that tour as he's down there right now buying stuff we can't afford, I'm sure, and bringing it back. You'll get an actually behind the scenes with the actual distributors and manufacturers of some of the stuff that you buy here at Fishy Business. So I'm sending off. Have a fantastic week. If you need us, we're here for you. If you need service, if you need advice, if you need supplies, give us a call. Have a great week.